or something like that. It's like that. It'll be a bit like, you know, 200k. 200k. Yeah, it, it, grow, it grows as you're done. I just think when you create it the very first time, I'm not sure. It was about a megabyte, no? No, see, it, it varies because the size of the of the dynamic disk when you first create it is actually the size of a lookup table. Yeah. And the size of the lookup it table is how yeah. no, yeah. So it'll be, it'll be somewhere between, you know, 50k to about 4 meg. For, you know, actually, if you create a 2 terabyte drive, you get an 8 meg. And by the way, that is the limit. A VHD can grow up to 2.04, 2.04. It's, it's, it's actually, it's actually 1.99 terabytes. Okay. About 2 terabytes. 2.040 but gigabytes. Actually, actually if, we, if we go by the uh, storage industry practice, it's probably like 2.1 terabytes. You okay. Up, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> <Yeah, fine. So, laughs> God, let's 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 spend five minutes doing the calculations <laughs> yeah, to figure out so exactly what the uh, terabyte is. So, a dynamically expanding hard disk typically looks something like this. It'll have some sort of header, some sort of footer, and some sort of data sitting in the middle. Now, if you create a one gigabyte or a two or four gigabyte um, blank dynamically expanding hard disk, essentially the data bit sitting in the middle is empty. There's no data actually on there, so that's not taking real disk space on your disk. So the only thing that we really need to take disk space for is a header and a footer. Okay. Okay. And then as you add data to it, we expand it and it grows on disk as, hmm. as read and write are uh, made, so writes particularly are made to that, uh, that disk. So, okay, so uh, can you explain if we can do a dynamic disk on top of things like RAID, different RAID levels and things like that? Of course you can, yeah, because it's just a file that sits on disk, so it makes no difference. You're talking about on the physical RAID itself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So we, we can we can store virtual hard drives on pretty much uh, anything that Windows can access. Yeah. You know, Raz, Daz, Daz, yeah. Say yeah. Dead, dead, dead as crazy as you want. You know, and knock yourself as, out. As, as long as this parent partition has drivers that can access the, the backing storage, then you can stick your files on it. Yeah, right. in, in, in my house, I store my uh, Hyper-V virtual hard disk on my home server. So a differencing disk. So you start with either a fixed or a dynamic. Doesn't really matter. So you have your what we call a parent disk. Okay, nothing to do with the parent partition, but just we just like parent term. We just like the term, yeah. And then we have one or more trial disks. So you could have two trial disks of this, and then you start building trees. You can have child, child. It can go as deep as you want. Really doesn't matter. So the difference between a differencing disk is, if we take the simple case where there really is just one parent and one child, from a virtual machine perspective, if you attach, you attach this VHD here to the virtual machine. And what that means is that any writes that come from the virtual machine go into the child disk. And any reads, if the data is present in the child disk, and it's read from the child disk, but if it's not present in there, and it hasn't been overwritten since the data was originally in the parent disk, we go off and read it from the parent disk. Why would you want to do this? Why would you want to do this? Snapshots, which is very convenient. Mm. Well, no, I'll talk about that later. I know, so we, we use differencing disks in, in, a, in a number of scenarios. We actually use a internal, well, it's actually, it is exactly a differencing disk, but we use them in snapshots. But you can use uh, differencing disks very effectively if you're building like a lab environment. So typically, um, let's say a patching scenario, so this is a great one. So you might have a 2003 server base VHD, and then you might typically say put SP1 on a child disk, and then you put SP2 down here in this second child disk down here. Mm -hmm. So you, you can roll back, you can like point your VM back at this one here back to SP1. You would never do that because as soon as you start writing to this, you've actually invalidated this. But yeah. so Makes what sense. You'd actually, what you'd actually yeah. do is like create another differencing disk up here and point your VM to here and go back to SP1. So you'd yeah. never touch an update of okay. a parent. So now it